What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video we are covering the Community Day Pokemon of Victory Bell, getting access to the fast move of Magical Leaf. Now, if you are left outside of the joke, if you are hidden under a rock, Bellsprout is in the Pokedex number 69. Today, Community Day for Victory Bell is April 20th. 420 and the move that it got was magical leaf. I'll let you guys put that all together Well done by Niantic for sliding that under the table and getting that approved as it is very comical But what is not comical is the power that shadow victory bell has we all know shadow victory bell with Razor leaf, right? But what we don't know is how good it can be with energy gain leaf blade and sludge bomb sludge bomb Not as much but leaf blade is a very good good energy to damage charge move. You guys experienced that maybe with Shadow Gallade earlier this season. Victory Bell is on par with that and what we're going to be doing is running a Dugong Victory Bell core with Annihilate Safe Swamp. Now in my defense, some of you guys may be going Yonkis showcase this team as well. He sure did. In my defense, I did not see his video. Him and I just seem to be on the same brainwave with some of the videos that we drop. Um, Dugong makes a lot of sense on the lead because if people are going to run the Bastion on double Razor Leaf teams, uh, Dugong can too, do pretty well in that matchup. And it also does well against the teams that beat Bastion double Razor Leaf, which is typically like Wizcash Skarmory, right? Because uh, Dugong does a very good job at core breaking a lot of teams. But I am running a Nihilape with close combat. A lot different to Shadow Ball. People get taken by surprise. This video is full of booms. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, getting into the first battle, we have Dugong on the lead versus Mantine. I actually saw this flyer quite a bit. Uh, and obviously on the lead, this is pretty decent for us. Now, Mantine can do quite a bit of damage with the Wing Attack Aerial Ace combination. It's gonna take a while to get my Dugong down, especially with the Ice Shard debuffs, or sorry, the Icy Wind debuffs we are gonna be applying. Uh, but what I'm also fearful of is a, poten is a potential ABA Flyer formation, so like a Dragon in the back, maybe Shadow Dragonite or something like that. Uh, so what we're gonna look to do is keep going for Icy Winds in this situation and not give up any shields just yet uh, because Annihilate and Victory Bell will definitely need them in order to potentially win this game. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for one more icy wind now i have this inkling feeling quite often when i see mantine leads but they decide to swap out into gudra um, i have the inkling that it's always like aba something like that because mantine is just one of those pokemon now gudra on the lead right here we're gonna go ahead and shield i think aqua tail might have just been enough damage to take us out and what i really want to do is get this into the ones and also apply the attack debuff that way my annihilate here can come in and load up on energy we shouldn't be taking too much damage from Aqua Tail because of the Icy Wind debuff. So this is going to be a very good situation for us to potentially fully farm down aggressively here with the counter fast move as we do get it. Now, I make a mistake right here and I go for one counter. I should have thrown the Night Slash right away. That was a mistake on my end. So I'm forced to now shield an Aerial Ace that I wouldn't have otherwise needed to shield. But we're going to go ahead and go for the Night Slash here to get rid of Mantine if they decide to shield shield, we double throw Night Slash. They decided to let it go, and we do see Shadow Dragonair come in, so I'm going to go ahead and go for the close combat. This is obviously going to one-shot, but what it will do is probably get the final shield. Now, here's the play. You see it, I see it. Shadow Victory Bell, like or normal Victory Bell, I should say, with Magical Leaf gains energy very quickly. And what we're going to do is utilize the Dugong as our third shield, catching the Body Slam right here. And this is a matchup Victory Bell would have never won, ever. This was not have been possible, but because of the energy gain, we are able to get to Sludge Bomb and... Boom! Down goes the Dragonair, and that is going to be a good game, very well played. Alright, moving into the next one, we have Dugong on the lead versus Vigoroth. Very tough lead right here, not too bad when we come back in with energy, so we're going to go ahead and swap into Annihilate, and they do bring in Altaria. So we're going to look to overload on energy and go for Night Slashes. We really don't have a lot of neutral damage that we can do with Shadow Ball or the Ice Punch super effective, but what we do have is the potential to boost, and this now puts Annihilate at another level. Everyone has to start fearing 
a boosted annihilate so we do get a shield and this is the exact setup that we needed in order to potentially win this game the two to one shield advantage with an aggressive farm down from dugong so we're going to go ahead and let the annihilate go through Dugong now is going to come in. We're going to go for the hard farm down. We're going to let any charge move hit us. I don't care if it's Moonblast. We are not shielding. We are keeping two shields for Victory Bell because this team is an ABB formation. And our hope is always with Annihilate Safe Swap to draw out the flyer, which we have done in this situation. So now what we're going to look to do is go for Icy Wind against Vigoroth. We're looking to do some chip. We're looking to do a dip. And we're looking to apply the debuff while we swap into Victory Bell to get ahead on energy. Now what I love about Victory Bell with Magical Leaf is the animation that it has. I really haven't gotten to use another Magical Leaf user and what you guys can see is that they are actually core broken. Victory Bell is going to do this to a lot of teams especially if you get the Skarmory, the Talonflame, or the Altaria out of the game as Leaf Blade is going to be destroying Lanterns right here. It is so, I should say, magical to see uh, Victory Bell in a different, uh, different, different hemisphere now. You're no longer needing to Razor Leaf. In fact, Magical Leaf, I would argue, is better um, than Razor Leaf because of the damage it already does and the spam that it has. Remember, we still have the same coverage. A Victory Bell will destroy a Whizcash. That is granted. But what we now have is the ability to go for Sludge Bomb against the Dragonair like you guys have seen, against the Vigoroth here to knock it out. So that is going to be a good game, very well played. All right, moving to the next one, Dugong versus Wizcash. This is why I built this team, probably why Yonkis built the team as well, is Dugong does so well against, it does potentially well against Bastion, right, with Drill Run, and it also does well against Wizcash Skarmory cores, which can are going to be very common because it was Victory Bell Community Day. So we're going to go ahead and swap into Annihilate now to get ahead on Energy, hoping to draw out that Skarmory or that Talonflame. Whatever flyer is back there, they need an answer. So we're going to go ahead and shield. It is going to be Mud Bomb, and sure enough, there is the Skarmory on cue. This is what this team does because that is the answer that they do have for Annihilate. So we're going to go ahead and go for Night Slash first, and then we're going to go for the sneaky close combat. What I should... Oh, this is beautiful. What I should have done, though, is this lands, but I should have gone for one counter before throwing close combat. That was an error on my end because I would have taken switch advantage, but now, unfortunately, boom, I go down. So what you guys saw is the potential utility. I didn't execute it as well. We're going to see more close combats later, but we will be able to farm down with Dugong as we see the Whizcash come in. Now, we're gonna swap into our Victory Bell right here to get ahead on energy, and we'll have to see what they have in the back, but as you guys can see, Magical Leaf is just destroying. I'm gonna opt to no shield this charge move as well, and happen to be Scald, which is really nice. It's gonna be resistant. The final Pokemon is going to be Tentacruel, so a very typical Whizcash double answer to grass type team, um, and double answer to fighter. Now, I'm pretty... I guess I would say, in hindsight, my opponent is probably wishing they could... Oh, no, no, never mind. Sorry. Skarmory was still a decent answer. I guess Tentacruel and Skarmory uh, would have been pseudo answers to Annihilate. They wouldn't have had a lot of fun. But what we are going to see right here is a, a judgment call, right? I lose if I get hit with Sludge Wave. I win if I no shield a Scald. So we're going to call it, and it's going to be Scald. That was my win condition. I'm guessing they wanted to go for double Scald here to try to apply attack debuff so they could potentially win the game. So obviously, I not only have to call the double Scald, but I also have to win the not Scald debuff, the 50% chance right there. So that is a good battle uh, as uh, Drill Run basically knocks out, and we are able to take it. So good game, very well played. All right, moving to the next one. Dugong on the lead versus Swampert. So similar to Whizcash right here, but what I'm going to do is go into Annihilate right away to start getting a hit on energy, and we actually draw out Mantine. Now I make a mistake here, and I've realized that I made this after I threw the Night Slash. 
um, I always build up to Shadow Ball. Don't be like me and just go for Night Slash because it was out of habit, right? So now I, I just, I just, I, I realized it after my second Night Slash. I should say that, not my first. While I was doing this battle, obviously I'm recording after the fact. Um, but now we put no pressure on the shields right there. Had we gone for Shadow Ball, maybe we get the two to one shield advantage. So what I have to do is basically no shield the Aerial Ace, and I also have to no shield on Dugong. I'm gonna need to go for an aggressive farm down with Ice Shard and pray that I can get a shield, a two to one shield advantage against that Swampert so that Victory Bell could potentially sweep. Now we've seen a Swampert lead with a Mantine in the back. That's pretty good core considering how well Swampert can do against something like a Lantern because of the added ground typing to resist Spark. But what also troubles me is the fact that they don't have a really hard answer for grass. Uh, Mantine is a soft answer, it takes neutral damage. So I am fearing a double flyer backline potentially, but we're just gonna pray that that's not the case. And then we're gonna go ahead and go for Icy Wind here against the Swampert. I don't want Swampert to get ahead on energy as well. So after this Icy Wind, I'm gonna be swapping out into the Victory Bell. And then we do see, mm, it is Double Flyer. So Swampert, Double Flyer was able to handle me. I misplayed it, obviously. Um, Dugong could have done well on the lead against Swampert. Uh, but ultimately, there is still a Charizard and still a Mantine that I had to take down with a Grass Fighter backline. And unfortunately, uh, Leaf Blade, we didn't have enough health to get to the Sludge Bomb even though I got the shield and Leaf Blade is just not going to be enough damage. So what I'm going to look to do is uh, no shield the charge move right here as they will decide to throw and that is going to be a good game, very well played. Um, Could have played it a bit better myself but ultimately Double Flyer, going to be a bit hard for this team to overcome. Good battle. Alright, moving to the next one. We have Dugong on the lead versus Annihilate. Very tough lead right here. We're gonna go ahead and swap into the mirror, look to get ahead on energy, and they actually bring in a superior, which is quite interesting because uh, we can do a lot of damage with close combat. Now, I go for Night Slash here first. I think I should have done one more counter there. Now looking back at it, which is unfortunate for me, um, but now what I have to do is look to, uh, to give up a shield. Um, as Aerial Ace or Frenzy Plant are going to be doing quite a bit of damage. Now, Aerial Ace is not enough to knock out from this range, so we're going to go ahead and build up now to the potential Shadow Ball and go for Night Slash. This could get a shield, which it does from my opponent, and now if they actually go for Aerial Ace here, we might just survive. Let's find out. We do. Barely. And we are able to get to the Night Slash in time. This is going to set me up with Switch Advantage or the 1-0 to Shields as we do get Switch. This is perfect. I get the boost the last second, but that ultimately didn't matter. Now, we're coming in with Victory Bell here against the Annihilate. Again, Leaf Blade, or Magical Leaf and Leaf Blade is pretty spammy uh, in terms of the ability to ch throw out those charge moves, but this Annihilate is running Ice Punch. So what I'm praying is that my opponent doesn't know the count to which I can get to two Leaf Blades. So we throw the Leaf Blade and they let it go and the final Pokemon was Lantern. That is, uh, is very tough for them. I think looking back at that, I probably would have made it to second Leaf Blade with a charge attack priority, maybe against the Annihilate. Uh, but now I decide to swap into Dugong here because I didn't want to get hit with the Thunderbolt on the Victory Bell. Thunderbolt is obviously going to do super effective damage here, but if we take a look at the fact that I have Drill Run, this does nearly 50%. It's like 46% or something like that of a lantern's health. This is going to be free damage that we can land and now we should be able to ice shard down and that is going to be a good game. Very well played. All right, moving to the next one. Dugong versus Skeledurge. This is uh, obviously going to be a tough one. Uh, Skeledurge in the right situation. If my opponent knows what I have in the back and if they give up shields, now I mistimed right here. I threw and I, I gave him a free incinerate. Never do that to a Skeledurge. It might come back to bite me later uh, like a crocodile would. But we get a shield with Icy Wind. So this is kind of like, all right, I gave you a free fast move, but I did get a uh, Icy Wind um, D, uh, bait right there. Not necessarily a bait because they are the same energy. 
um, in terms of uh, Icy Wind and Drill Run, but abate in the fact that they could have potentially no shielded a resisted charge move, right? Now my opponent decides to swap out into Skarmory here, so we go go for the Icy Wind, and now we're actually going to have to come in with Annihilate. Annihilate in this situation can still do very well. We don't take much damage from Steel Wing, the fast move there on Skarmory, but what we can do is a lot of neutral damage here with Counter, along with Night Slash. So we're going to go ahead and look to no shield, or sorry, shield the Sky Attack. We're going to build up some extra energy, go for a Night Slash here. If we get the boost, which I always love, we will be able to farm down. If not, we'd have to look to go for another Night Slash, as uh, now we're going to see Skeledurge come in. So I'm going to try my best, go one two counters and throw the Night Slash here. I think they are one incinerate away from a disarming voice. So this Night Slash, boom, one shots the Skeletors and the final Pokemon is a Whizcash. So we're gonna go for, I should have just gone for close combat looking back at this, but ultimately it does not matter. We have a Victory Bell in the back. My opponent does decide to shield, but I swap now into Victory Bell and that is gonna be a good game, very well played. All right, moving into the next one. We have Dugong on the lead versus Shadow Dragonair. Pretty nice lead here for us. And what you guys are going to see is the power of close combat. We do see a Lickitung swap in, so we bring in Annihilate. Now, everyone, every single person in Go Battle League has been conditioned for Night Slash or Ice Punch with Shadow Ball. But ladies and gentlemen, battlers of all ages, boom, see ya! Lickitung is gone. The boomer shines once again as we are able to get to a Night Slash here to do a lot of neutral damage and maintain switch advantage. Annihilate, destroy. I'm telling you guys, do not sleep on close combat. It is incredibly powerful and a lot of people just let it go through. It is so much damage because they think they're safe, right? You're not safe anymore. Body Slam, not going to do that much damage. We are going to look to shield this charge move. I want to maintain some health here on Dugong, just in case I need it against whatever's in the back. But the final Pokemon is Lantern, so Victory Bell will take it here for me. And my opponent decides to surrender, so good game. Alright, moving to the next one. Dugong on the lead versus Azumarill. Now, Azumarill can be handled by this team, but my opponent decides to swap out into Furfrau, uh, which is obviously pretty spicy. Sand Attack, Surf, and Power Whip. Now, obviously, I don't fear the damage just yet. A Surf isn't going to do that much. But what I do fear is the... Oh, this is so tough. What I do fear is potentially getting knocked out, but I'm going to risk it here as the Surf is not enough to KO, and I do have double Night Slash. So this is pretty good, um, because Night Slash is going to be enough to knock out. My opponent decides to shield, so I'm going to go ahead and throw another one. And uh, this is going to get shield number two. Now, I don't get a counter in right here, uh, unfortunately. But now I can come in with Dugong and Ice Shard down, and I'm going to save the Victory Bell just in case. I don't know what they have in the back, but a safe swap normal type begs the question that it's going to be some type of tank in the back. Now they bring in a Zoomerl as well. So this, this kind of throws me off. I decide to go for Icy Wind. This is so counterintuitive, right? They have no shields. I have two. Why not go for Drill Run? Well, it's because I don't need to shield a play rough. And what I instead want to do is allow myself to tank the charge move better while storing up energy because I am scared of what is potentially in the back and we are going to find out that I'm going to have to shield on the victory bell. Um, we're going to find out exactly what it is in just a moment as we stop that ice beam and it's going to be a ferrothorn. So pretty interesting um, that they decided to come in with a Zoomerl against the Dugong. I guess it's because of uh, the neutral matchup that we would have there because I had some energy and two to zero shields. Maybe that was the case, uh, but either way, we are going to be able to win this game. As I decide to shield the first charge move, it is going to be Power Whip and uh, Sludge Bomb here. Still going to do a good amount of damage and uh, we should be able to survive uh, hopefully they don't have flash cannon. That's kind of our lose condition right here But I don't think they will as we go ahead and let well we're out of shields now So 
We're gonna pray it's Thunder or Power Whip and it is Thunder, which is fine. This is gonna allow me to overload on some energy. I can go for safely go for Leaf Blade here uh, because I can easily get to another one against the Azumarill as they already dumped all the energy. And that is gonna be a good game as the Azumarill it is going to go down to the final Leaf Blade. And uh, Victory Bell once again, bringing me to victory here in the Great League. Boom, see ya. That is gonna be a good game, very well played. We have a few more battles. Dugong versus Wizcash. All right, so this one, much like before, it's gonna be most likely a flyer in the back, typically Skarmory. And what we're looking to do is because this is Shadow, they actually take quite a bit of damage from Icy Wind. So odds are they might want to shield. Um, so we're gonna go for the Icy Wind here to try to apply that debuff. And then we're gonna go into the Annihilate to draw out the Skarmory if it is in the back. They decided to no shield, so so be it. I'm gonna swap into Annihilate, and they actually bring in Wigglytuff. And everyone, if you stuck around this long, you will be satisfied as we did enough counters to get to close combat, but right at the edge where we boom, one shot the Wigglytuff. Close combat, everyone. Close combat. Final Pokemon is going to be Lickitung. So I'm going to bring in the Dugong right here. Um, and then I'll look to go for Icy Winds as Victory Bell should be able to take this game for me. And that is what I absolutely love about Annihilate. Like, what do we need Shadow Ball for, right? You might go, well, Psychics, like Cresselia. Or, um, you know, maybe some Ghosts. Maybe there's, I don't know... Um, let's think of, uh, like, Trevenant, for example, right? You might need Shadow Ball for that, but Night Slash helps cover that. You might need it for the Annihilate the Mirror. Well, you can always bait and just go straight Night Slash. But what Close Combat does is it throws everyone off. Every, and they may, may not anymore. But for me, it has thrown every single player off. I landed the close combats that I wanted to. Now I make a critical mistake right here. For as great as this game was, I no shielded a mu I don't know what I'm doing. I, I have two shields. Like now I just get lick farm down from Lickitung. I, I, I win this game if I, sh yeah, good game. I, I win the game if I shield. I don't know what I was doing there. I think I was just so excited that I landed the close combat against a victory bell that, or against a uh, Wigglytuff that I just, just gave up the win con. Good battle. All right, moving to the next one. We have Mantine here on the lead. Uh, once again, kind of that neutral matchup, always fearful of the potential ABA flyer formation. Uh, so we're gonna look to no shield right here and then just go for icy winds and try to play it out from there. Now in a previous battle, I believe they swapped into Gudra, if I remember correctly, um, earlier in this video. We'll have to see what this opponent does as we're looking to load up on energy and they uh, decide to go for another aerial ace, which is totally fine. We're gonna go for that icy wind as soon as we get it and uh, hope that they also don't try to catch the resisted charge move, which they don't. So we get this icy wind off. And now this is the time where both trainers, myself and my opponent could potentially be swapping out. So I decide to swap out instead. I am so fearful that they have ABA flyer that I come in with Annihilate right here. I tank an Aerial Ace and we'll find out. They bring in Wizcash, which is very interesting uh, because now I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's not another flyer in the back. Close combat here, gonna do a lot of damage, but my opponent decided to shield. But what I have here is a great opportunity for a victory bell sweep. Since I went for close combat, I'm gonna no shield this mud bomb. It is gonna knock us out. And now I'm gonna come in with Victory Bell and absolutely load up on energy. We have the two to ones. If there was another flyer in the back, right? Maybe a Dragonite, maybe a Skarmory, maybe a Talonflame, maybe Altaria. It would have come into that Annihilate. It would have not have been this Wizcash. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for the farm down. I shielded the charge move this time on the Victory Bell and we see the final Pokemon is actually going to be Annihilate. Now my opponent decides to swap and they do catch the charge move, but ultimately Magical Leaf and Leaf Blade is way too spammy that my opponent now is not gonna be able to outpace me. Two Leaf Blades is gonna be enough. One for the shield and one for the knockout as I do stop the Night Slash. And this is gonna be a good game. The energy gain and actually damage from Magical Leaf, to be completely honest, 
is amazing. I highly prefer it over Leaf Blade, or not Leaf Blade, sorry, Razor Leaf. Um, as in terms of fast moves because of the coverage it still has and the ability now I decide to swap out into dugong to fast move down But the coverage uh, and energy gain that it has is just way too good and the damage is pretty strong as well You guys have seen that against Wizcash today This team did incredibly well for me overall today climbed up to expert as well um, So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This team is awesome. Give it a try victory bell with magical leaf I believe is now the way to go and give that annihilate close combat a try as well. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video and like always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.